If you really want to understand how a 4x4 Rubik's Cube works, this video is exactly what you're looking for. If you also want to have some help because you are trying to solve it by yourself, this video is also useful for you. Let's start talking about the differences between a regular Rubik's Cube and a 4x4 Rubik's Cube. In a 4x4 Rubik's Cube, there are 4 corners in the top side and 4 corners in the bottom side, exactly as happens in a regular 3x3 Rubik's Cube. And corners on a 4x4 Rubik's Cube work with the same algorithms as in a 3x3. The only difference is that centers are made up by 4 different parts and edges are made up by 2 different parts. It's just like if we divided each center of a regular 3x3 by 4 and each edge of a regular 3x3 by 2. The first and most important thing you have to do before it starts scrambling a 4x4 Rubik's Cube is that you have to know where the colors are. I mean, you have to know that uh, the red is the opposite for the pink, for example, and then the sequence of the color, white, green, yellow in my cube. So my advice is that you have to write down on a paper top equals to red, for example, bottom equals to pink, and then turning the cube clockwise, you have uh, starting from the white, for example, you can write white, green, and yellow. So, only if you know where the colors are, you can solve this kind of cube. But if, for any reason, you don't know where the colors are, because your cube is already scrambled or something, don't worry, following my instructions, you will be able to solve it anyway. So, now that you know where the colors are, we can start scrambling the cube without scrambling the, the centers and the edges. If we scramble the cube this way, we don't scramble the centers and edges. And we can notice that this cube works exactly as a 3x3 three three Rubik's Cube. You can solve the cube this way using a layer-by-layer layer method or the Friedrich method, it doesn't matter, and you are able to solve the cube. Okay, but the particularity of this cube is that we can scramble the centers and the edges. So we can start seriously scrambling the cube So a 4x4 Rubik's Cube is a, what I consider an even cube. Even cube because 4, the number of the cubes for each side, is an even number, it's not odd. The difference is uh, simple and interesting at the same time. Because in a, in a node cube, just like a regular 3x3, each side has a center which is unmovable. So the green will always be the opposite for the blue and the white will always be the opposite for yellow. So you know the color of each side you have to solve by taking a look at the central part. The, center, the centers tells you which color will be that side. This doesn't happen in a 4x4 Rubik's Cube because centers are made up by four different parts and you don't know if this side will be red, pink, yellow or blue. You can know that. 
So we have to start solving a 4x4 Rubik's Cube by a random layer and we have to assume that that layer will be our top layer. Uh, in our paper we wrote top equals to red, so red will be the first layer we have to solve. And as centers and edges uh, have been the last part we have scrambled, centers and edges will be the first part we have to solve in this cube. In particular we have to start solving the centers. Centers are the first thing you have to solve in a 4x4 Rubik's Cube. So let's start now solving the cube starting from the top. So assuming that one layer will be our red layer. This layer contains two reds, two reds in the in the centers, so this could be a good layer to start from. Now we have to pick up this red and bring this red down here. So uh, the trick is to go up, to, li to line up and then go back. So if we go up with this layer, I'm gonna move this, uh, this two, we don't line up the reds. So we have to move this red from here to here by rotating counterclockwise by 90 degrees the top side, this new top side. And then we, we can go up, line up the two reds, turn the, this, this top and then come back. Now we have, we have three reds here. Let's search for the other red which is here and we can do just, just the same we have made. So I can go up with this layer, with this side, I go up, I line up the two reds, turn this layer and then come down. Now the first center of the top layer is done. Quite simple. Now we have to solve the bottom, the opposite. The opposite is pink, so this layer will be pink. And this is our first pink. We have to search for the other three. So one is here, so we can line up these two. I have to turn this this way and if I go up I, I see that it doesn't match. So I have to go down, prepare this, moving this pink in this side. So now I can go up, line up the two pink, turn this part and then go down. Now you can see that we have two pink here but the red is still done. Take a look at what you've done and be sure that you don't, you don't have to destroy what you've done while you go on in solving this cube. The other two pink are already lined up. So we can uh, turn this this way and this part this way. So now I can go up, take the two pink and then go down. And the center, the bottom layer is done and the red is still done. So now we have solved the top, top center and the bottom center. Now we have to work on the side, on the side centers. The first layer will be white. So this could be white, we already have a white. I have the red on my left and the pink on my right. So uh, I have to bring this down. We can do just this because we're working on the side. So I don't, I don't scramble the two centers I have done. So now I can do this and search for another white this way. The other one is here. So I move this white from here to here by doing this. Then I go up, 
lining up these two, I turn this part and I bring this part down. Now three centers are done. Now we have to work for the green. The green is this side because you remember we have turned our cube clockwise. White, green. So we, ha we already have two green here and we, we have to look for the other two. But they are not on this side of the cube. They are on the back of the cube here. No problem. We can do as follows. So I can bring the two in this part and park the two here. Then I have to come back. Now I can line up two reds as we did before and bring them down. And the last one, I can put the green here. I go up, I line up the two green and then I go down. Now, white, green, yellow. Yellow is the last part, so for the last part I have to um, go up, line up these two and then go down. Now I can park this two here, I go up, I bring the two yellow and then I go down and the blue comes automatically. So we have top on the, uh, the red is top, the bottom is pink and then we have white, green, blue. So now all the centers are solved. If you don't know where the colors are, you have to do like this. You have to um, choose one color. For example, the red one, I always start from the red in this kind of cube. And choose a random layer and assuming that that layer will be red. For example, this one. And solve the centers as I showed you before. So assuming that this will be red. You have to put the four corners on this side. So you have to use the elevator method. I already explained it in my previous video about the 3x3 three three Rubik's Cube. I can put this corner here. The elevator goes down, loads the piece and that goes up, then goes up. Uh, this side can be yellow and then we have to search for the yellow which is here so down right up so we have two yellow corner here then we have to look for the blue uh, and red which is uh, here so okay and the last one will be white and red which is here so once that all the four corners are solved you have to look for the colors so top will be red this layer will be yellow blue and white and the color which is left will be on the bottom so you can know where the colors are even if your cube is already scrambled 